every little bit I get to play. Mass Effect week. Yeah. It's been so long. I mean, that was I mean, the crack I, I made in the community channel. I haven't streamed it in the last four years. That's why I leaked fine. It's like, oh, hey, look at everything that's changed. Nothing to me. Uh, I mean, I already had streamed the whole uh, whole series plus Andromeda back to back about two years ago, three years ago. But yeah, I'm, I, it has some slight improvement. It was a remaster. It wasn't designed to be a complete remake. They were not going to actually, you know, rewrite the entire game. So. I just meant that I have such poor, I guess, eyesight that I can't tell the difference. Most of the differences are in textures. Yeah. And some of the UI elements have been streamlined, like uh, also things like, hey, we're giving you controller support from the get-go on PC, because that was a pain back when the PC versions were out. Well, I mean, like, I've never been able to see anything above, like, 720p. Or I can't tell the difference between 30 uh, FPS and 60 FPS, so... These differences weren't for me. There is a lot of minor um, things to it. Um, smoother aiming for the first game, which I am a big appreciative fan of. You also have um, UI and uh, interface changes. They streamline the leveling up a little bit. So now it's like faster XP game if you do the classic mode. Or you can get a slower experience by doing legendary modes where they just cut your levels in half but still give you the points for it. Okay, but how long does it take you to find all of the keepers on the Citadel? Um, I found 11 out of 13 in an hour and a half. It's not that yeah, hard. Yeah, so not that big of a difference. So that's... Well, I also know where they all are because I've beaten all three of the games six times. Yeah, I only did it once where I tried to do everything. A lot of Mass Effect. That, I did it one for each class. So that was good with um, the one class. And the one class I still like the most is Infiltrator, so just got to snipe everybody. Can't remember the name. Uh, the one where you shoot across the map, oh, whack them down, put up a shield. Vanguard. Vanguard, there we go. It was either Vanguard or Engineer that I loved. I know I've watched a lot of people play Vanguard. Well, each uh, game like changes it, um, how it works. The first game is the most role like RPG like where you have certain powers per class. Um, the second game they actually di- um, distinguish the powers a lot better. Vanguard in Mass Effect Two and Three is actually when you first can do the charge and smack and all that stuff. Um, you can't do that in the first game. Whereas Engineer in Mass Effect 2 and 3, I believe you get a remote companion. So you get like a pet. That That's what I was then. I, I played Engineer through all the games. Yeah. And in uh, just the, the first game for Mass Effect, the Engineer was basically doing decryption, overloads, dampening. That's pretty much it. Infiltrator does all that. Plus they get sniper rifles for assassination and some uh, attack techniques. Which is the game again where when you hack, you did the giant circle. That That's was the first game. The first one, yeah. And only on PC, I think. In, in Yeah, the X- console X- version, you had to play Simon Says. Exactly, yeah. They changed that now. Now it's uh, the uh, the wheel for all of them. Yeah, the wheel is easier. It's more straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. Although, you know, they took away that mini game in 2, and then in, in 2, it was pair- it basically it was pairing, you know, different sections of script. I didn't year, actually uh, mind that mini game. At the time, I was too smooth brained to understand the wheel. What year yeah. did um, the original Mass Effect come out? 2007. And what year yeah. did uh, Alpha Protocol come out? 2009. Yeah. I just remember yeah. I hated the hacking in Alpha Protocol, and it really made me appreciate Mass Effect. I mean, because at the end of the day, Mass Effect, I could just hold forwards, and eventually that wheel's going to match. <laughs> Oh, Alpha Protocol is a name I haven't heard in a while. Well, actually, you had a, a limited number of, of attempts before you ran out of time. Yeah, but you can save scum. I mean, yeah. There's also uh, Medi-Gel. Like I said, if you, you can... see scumming, it doesn't matter. Which yeah. I never used the Medi-Gel at all. I, I did. I did usually. They did, uh, by the way, other things that change is like uh, some of the creatures, especially when you're in the Mako, uh, the giant worms are now tougher to fight. Because uh, I heard that they have like a like a spray, which is a sort of like a shotgun style spray. So in the past, you just sort of dump over whatever, and it just now it's sort of it always almost hits you unless you're you know going very fast. Um, 
you know, stuff like that. They done the little things, right? They didn't change the the, the scale of anything, which is still in a mass effect. Everything is a little too small because everything scaled to the Mako, so the Mako actually kind of fits in most screens. Um, so you stand in a bed, and the bed's like this. You're like yay big, you're like a Ken doll facing like a like a teddy bear, you know, little teddy bear, uh, mini teddy bear bed or something like that. The Mako is still the weakest part of the first game. I actually like I love the Mako. I hated it. I, I hated the, there's it. There's actually nothing wrong with the Mako. But the problem with the 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 those Mako sections was whoever the fuck and I'm gonna say that uh, was given the, the the terrain tool because what they did was like, oh, let's put a mountain, Wah! and it just went crazy with the terrain tool, and then they put something on the other side of the mountain. It's like, oh, okay, I got, I got, you know. So the maker itself was fine. I mean, the controls are tank controls, which are pretty simple, you know. Look one way, say, move the other. Yeah. I'm going to say outright, with the terrain, it reminds me of every time I've started messing with, like, new terrain tools in a new editor. And it ends up exactly the same, where it's like, all right, I'm just going to make some big fuck off mountains and make this box canyon. Mm -hmm. That sounds about right. And That's they probably like, exactly what happened. <laughs> They also sparsely populated it with random items you can find, and really, it's kind of boring. The uh, are like, the problem; big, empty ones are. Yep. If you really boil it down, you can beat Mass Effect One in fifteen hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if you really, if you really want to have your characters well balanced for the end, you kind of have to do all those side quests, and those side quests kind of have side side stories in two and three, so you can miss a lot of little content bits in here if you don't do everything right. Or almost um, Yeah, you're right about some of those, yeah. Uh, like, you know, stuff with Rex. There's a side mission, which is, hey, this is... Like, the first game had loyalty missions, but they never actually said they were loyalty missions. So there's yeah, one for Garrus, there's one for Rex, and there's like, one you for have Tally. Like a, you have, like, a side thing with Tally, which you just do by happenstance. Which like is Rex pretty long, Rex. which is ridiculously long. No, it's like you have to kill, like, four different Geth outposts on four different planets. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, at the last outpost, whichever one you pick, oh, we have data. Give it to Tally. Mm -hmm. Hey, I did a quest I didn't even know I had. Thank you, Shepard. Let me exposit more information about my people for you, because that's all I am—a cultural font. Yeah. First game's writing is not the best either. When it comes I... to characters, not when it comes to lore. Mm -hmm. The plot is pretty solid. Oh, I said plot's pretty good too. <laughs> War is great. Char characters, uh... yeah. I mean, I like the characters. I love Tally. Tally's, you know, pretty cute. And Liara number one. Is... Um, I'm a, I'm a Liara, Liara Miranda kind of. I've guy, already so. said Talia or Samara, but Samara's not romanceable, so he shouldn't she be. She anyway. is technically. You just don't. Well, do yeah, like but she doesn't. Role. No, she says that she can't do anything with you because you know of her. The problem yeah. with her. Yeah, the fact that she lost three daughters to her condition and she actually is sworn to sell not celibacy, but essentially celibacy and, and a life of being a, a a female space paladin, you know. Kind of makes sense. Not every character should be formidable. Right. That's why she's on my list, but you know, she can't she's not on the list. I didn't even know you had a list. Everybody yeah. has a list. Oh, I mean, I said it. I said it in your chat the same way I said it in Lessons chat. You did it in my chat. You did. I don't know. I don't have a list. I just like your friend who, who, read which, it out. Which character should my shepherd romance? It depends on that. Like, yeah, and you are hardcore Liara, apparently. I well, my main pay playthrough was always Liara. I always found that to be the best romance, personally. Yeah, Lessons apparently agrees with you. Yeah, I mean, I mean technically, I pr I prefer Miranda, but since you she doesn't appear in the first game. And I want my old the my playthroughs to be like smooth throughout, right? I don't want her in the third game or like, so you're banging someone else, huh, bitch? It's like, whoa, 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 where did that come from? Ah, wait, that wait, reason. what? <laughs> What's up? Which is weird because in the first game you can actually accidentally try to romance two people at the same time, and then one of one of them is well, one of them has to be Liara because I don't know, it shouldn't be, but it is. Um, they actually can confront both of you, go like, you got to choose between two of us. And Liara will actually say, well, I got no problem with the threesome, basically. And the other, and the other person's going like, what? Like, no, like, F you. Like, no, we're not doing this. 
know. Uh, but then Liara's like, oh, I'm just so jealous because, I don't know, I guess I'm jealous. Never been interested in Liara. She's boring to me. She gets interested in too. See, I've romance, well, I mean, the whole, I know, whole shadow broker thing, right? But at the same time, she's still just a bland character. Because she feels I, like the one Liara. that you're supposed to go with. Sorry, Rob, go ahead. Oh, oh. No, I, I, I'm thinking, I romance Liara both of the humans in one, even though, and I think they were both kind of bland. I romance Garrus, which was fun. To me, Liara is a blue <laughs> Ashley. Garrus is the second best romance, and it's like the only one I would pick for a female shepherd if I played female shepherd again. Um, I did romance Thane. I didn't like it that much. Uh, I did. I'm trying yeah, to think Thane has a great story. Thane's is good, but tragic. Yeah, and... that's the point. And if you romance him, you're like in there. Yeah, but you also, rom if you romance him, it ends with him becoming a force ghost and talking to you. Yeah. I mean, technically, same thing with Yara. No, I mean, like, legitimately. I mean, he, well, like, you become a force ghost. No, he legitimately transforms in the Citadel DLC, where you're, like, with all your romance partners and whatnot. The last scene, if you romance Thane, because he's dead by that point, is you have, like, a force ghost of him talking to you, and you're just, like, talking to him silently. It's actually kind of beautiful, but it is a little bit hokey. Because the dialogue is great, but everything else is, yeah. Let me get my list of the things I dislike about Citadel. Oh, okay, I just marked a, I marked that one too. Thank you. Okay. I like I love Citadel. It's so A cute. lot of people love Citadel, but let me tell you why people love Citadel. People love Citadel because it's, first of all, because of the crappy ending of Mass Effect. And second, because it's a fan job. It's a massive, massive fan job. It's like, hey, let's take the top 1,000 uh, fanfics of, you know, uh, and DeviantArt and stuff like that. Take all that stuff and put it in one DLC and charge you for the benefit. It's like, just go read the fanfics. They're probably written better written. You know. Like, I like that party, man. The party was fun. Eh, I and mean, it, let's be honest, because it's kind of a dour game, Mass Effect 3. True. Well, it, it shouldn't have been, but, you know. You know, I would argue it, uh, it's appropriate that it's such a bleak game, but it needs. What color? What color did you two pick? What? What color did you two pick? Synthesis. I Literally. Forgot, I forgot what color that was. That was blue, right? That was green, green. color. Green. That was the first color. I, I mean, did. that's what I went with, too. Let me tell you about the ending. When I first played it, because I was up two in the morning and I was like, okay, I'm going to finish this. And I was like, oh, it's up. Why, I am I, why am I on Earth? Well, okay, so I'm the one did. Uh, and I get to the colors, and I literally am like, well, I always play Paragon, so I guess I'm going to go for blue. And I did, and I'm like, this is dumb. And I was in shock for about three days, because I, I basically, I, I was so into it that I wanted to finish it. And nobody had posted on the internet what happened to the ending. So I was like, nobody, can somebody explain what happened here? And then, you know, start trickling down. Everybody's like, oh, what happened? Blah, 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 blah. And then the, the, the discourse started you know so i went back and was like oh you know i guess i'll try something else and i was like this is taking deus ex and doing it wrong <laughs> you know there was wrong so deus yeah ex. So eventually you've got everyone's going to die in earth orbit and then because yeah. earth can't support all these people <laughs> they're all the dying ships it, but also you have uh i loved indoctrination theory i that's essentially yeah. the way i would go the indoctrination theory is a nice theory, but it basically takes the ending trope of we just pulled this out of our asses with it was just all a dream. And that's well, when it failed. I mean, they confirmed that it's not real anyway. So yeah. the fact that it's not something they thought of, but it's something we thought of as fans and can apply it as true. I mean, it's well thought out. I mean, I give kudos to people who actually went out and tried to piece it together and tried to create an ending out of what was there. You know, just it, to make the sense of it. Interpreting. Yeah, I, I get that and kudos for them, but ultimately, on a meta level, it's like, as a writer, I go like, nope, this doesn't work. Sorry. <laughs> and the whole thing is like, oh, yeah, we, we, you know, we hate, we heard that you hated AI, so we created an AI to take over the AI. And what did the AI do? It, well, it screws true. over. Like, what? Bad thing, mostly because of, if you consider what the Leviathans really were. Like no, 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 don't, don't, don't start with the Leviathan because that's a way of retconning it and it just makes it worse. Like, oh, hey, we had all this power to control people, but not really. So we created the AI so that the AI didn't kill people. 
And what happened? The AI killed us. But we're still around, and we actually have the ability to destroy Reapers. And we, over a billion years or more, we could have actually given people technology to destroy the Reapers and end the cycle. But we didn't because we were too scared to hide. But now that you, Mr. Superhero Shepard, have showed up, maybe we'll show up and try to do something. And at the end, it's like, same thing anyway. It's a red card. It's a, it's a horrible red card. Hi, it's I'm a, Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite day six Machina on the Citadel. Yeah, it's a retcon to so like because the, 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 the line from Bio as well, you know, the, the reason why people don't like this is because they couldn't get it. And it's like, yeah, people who actually take it philosophy one on one understand that this is an ass pull. You know, this is just like this is you know, it is logical. Where's the logic in this? Like, no, no, well, you know, uh I mean there was a happy ending mod which is not ready for the legendary edition. That just cuts the whole star kit thing. And it's not great, but it's like, eh, it's okay. It goes from uh to eh, okay. You know. I guess I, I would at I, least I, give Bioware credit for attempting to be high minded with anything as opposed to not even trying. Yeah, but I, this is I the never, thing. I, as I a never writer the endings at all, honestly. I always thought I, that they were a little off, but they weren't bad. Dead, they're frankly. Bad. Uh this is the thing. Don't, as a writer, you got to be very careful to try to outsmart your audience because usually what you end up is outsmarting yourself. That you know, is people. an extremely true statement. True. I do it all the time. I'm going to be very clever. People are like, the key, the key well, you try. A, the key to a clever story is actually having it be a simple story that people that people make make clever themselves. Because the whole thing wasn't necessary, by the way. And we're a quarter of an hour into this cut in Mass Effect, folks. Okay. Hey, I'm eating, by the way, so that's well, why what I'm What can I keeping... say people are excited about it? <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a rabbit hole. Once you fall into the Mass Effect, it's you, literally the it's Mass good. Effect. I mean, it is. It is. In spite of everything, I mean, I'm I bought it. Thing, so. I mean, I can't complain. I bought the Legendary Edition, and I'm streaming, and I'm playing it. In fact, I'm planning to do two streams. One stream for Twitch, and then the other one uh, going to be... I do, uh, I'm do. i going to do game capture and do one for YouTube with, with a script and everything. Hopefully, that will work. Uh, SFD right, like just style. do the editing, put in the time, things like that. Yeah, I will have to Good make idea. a... I have to make a super cut of all the four locations in Mass Effect 3 that... Mass Effect that always, like, the mine... The two-story building, the round thing, the bottom, and the spaceship. Like, hey, it's another spaceship. They just moved the boxes around or added a, a tube here. Okay, that's a different... Now it's a space station. Or the mine. Well, I guess it's a, this door doesn't work, but this door does. Okay, cool. You know, that's it. It's just the same map. They just locked one door instead of the... Yeah, or they just have different enemies. Yeah, like, uh, same exact thing in Dragon Age 2. Yeah, but... But they even had less locations. And so now you, in Dragon Age, you even notice even more because it's like, oh, okay. So this time around, I go enter to that door over there instead of this door. So, you know. I love those cost saving measures when you need them. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that's game, game design in a nutshell back in that time, anyway. So if you really look at it like when you look at things like, uh, for example, Neverwinter Nights. Or um, you know, Kotor or anything else that Bioware was doing. Almost everything was like ground up, built, bare bones in terms of the visuals, bare bones in terms of the actual artistry. But where they always really tried to shine more was narrative and like trying to give the facsimile of a story and a world and things yep. like that. Anyway, like there are parts yeah. of the original Kotor I can't even touch because it bores me to death. The first entire half on uh, Taris is in terrible. Like I, it's like a slog to get through. And then I, I actually it, like Terrace. Winter Nights is unplayable as a game. I like um, Terrace. I actually prefer Terrace to the whatever explosive moon that you're in Kotor two. That was I think Kotor two is still probably my favorite RPG narrative ever. Still, I'm gonna say something wow. controversial. Kotor two is the last Jedi of Star Wars video games. Yep. And here I am, and I'm like, and that's oh hey, mm -hmm. I don't mind. I don't mind Terrace in Kotor One, but Paragus Mining Station in Kotor Two makes me Three, want to the, the spike station. into my head. 
Progress is at least very, very quick. It's Not boring. It, it's quick if you know what it's you're like doing. Like three places. Yeah, I mean, I, if you know what you're doing, you can get stuck. I, well. I know exactly what I'm doing because because of the amount of times I've played it. But like, I, I hate the start of it so much. Just that whole level. And the way I mean, that I'm they gonna, do their, I'm their, gonna, their quote unquote tutorial makes me want to drill up like two, in my head. Koto 2 is space uh, libertarianism. It's libertarianism in, <laughs> in, in, the, in, in Star Wars universe. Like, you shouldn't care about anybody. You should care about yourself. You know, cut yourself from the force. I mean, again, it's one of those situations where you have a very clever writer who was giving a little too much control. And decided to make this a, a, a you know an um an O to Iron Rand for some reason, and I'm like, yeah, that's where you lost me. It's the second I Iron Rand reference today, but we have been here all the time. Yeah, that's I've true. I've never seen it as an ode to Iron Rand. I just saw it more so about like the stupidity of some of the actual like mythological tropes that they did, and how right. he was trying to call attention to it. Yeah, you know, like if Kotor One was playing Star Wars straight, Kotor do. Two was deconstructing what the mm. force actually is. Actually, Kotor does a much better job of deconstructing Star Wars that uh, that Kotor Two does. It's too right. much. I, I am so curious about that argument, but we probably should play it. Yeah. Game. Well, actually, I actually, in order, to, you want to know what my argument is? I actually made a script doctors about Kotor Two. You can check it on my YouTube channel. It's right there. It check the link in the description or whatever. Uh, yeah. But for game. now, as your GM, I really got to start this game, you know. So, um, <laughs> you know. So let's start. Uh, let's start with the uh, uh, practice. Uh, tell us about your character. I'm which Gar, is still, the Necromancer Turtle, which is still which is named Zigzag on in the screen. By the way, well, it shouldn't <laughs> be. I changed it a while ago. Anyway, I'll fix it after. Uh, yeah. Huh. I don't know why other people would be seeing different things. Oh, my overlay. I swear mm -hmm. I changed that. Anyway, I'll, I'll fix that after. There's nothing I like more than a good mystery. Self-improvement is my ideal. My bond is that I sold my soul for knowledge, yada yada. Uh, unlocking an ancient mystery is worth the price of a civilization is my flaw. Okay. All right. Who's next? That'll be you. Okay, cool. Hey, everybody, I'm playing Baron Kicks the Shield, the Dragonborn Fighter. He's cool and calculating. He believes heroes stand up against all challenges. Those under my command responsibility come first, and I have an immense ego and delusions of grandeur that people just keep making come true. Hmm. <laughs> Until it explodes in your face. Anyway, uh, next up we have Pendrin. Pendrin. So I'm playing Barakat, the fake human eloquence bard. Uh, flattery is the best way to direct attention away from me. My ideal is I like si seeing the smiles on people's faces when I perform. My instrument is my most treasured possession. And I'm struggling with the secret identity. Mm -hmm. Next up we have uh, Justin. All right. My name is Justin. I am playing Hugh the Kobold, who was almost a Baron before we decided to uh, make a bit of a smarter choice. He uh, doesn't tend to think first. He doesn't have time for that. He believes in uh, equal treatment for everyone and protection. And he is going to be the greatest Kobold that ever lived, no matter what or who gets in his way. Mm. Oh, and yeah. he has a giant wolf spider. Oh, very important. Let's not forget about Wefford. Uh And finally, last but not least, Robert. Yes, I'm playing uh, Braith the Butcher. Um, he is a cleric of Cord. He is honest to a fault and resolute, desires to strive for truth and provide hope in a cruel world. But he's also known as the Butcher to many, a name that he has to wear with distinction. Or he chooses to, at least. And so we, uh, let's, let me open the uh, handouts here section of Greyhawk, because we have a lot of NPCs accumulated over a couple of sessions, probably over 20 by now. And last time, uh, the characters decided that they were, in fact, going to join the uh, the games, uh, the, the Midsummer Games in the city of Greyhawk. Uh, they found a sponsor. Uh, they agreed for a percentage 17.5%, I believe it was, uh, his cut. 
and um, they were going to participate. He said that they he gave you a rundown of the rules, but the specifics will be given in a party uh, that will be uh, held a couple of days before the uh, the events. Now we can try to role play the two weeks in between. Either you go back and forth to Narwhal or stay in the city. That's entirely up to you. Or we can fast forward to the party itself. Right. If anything, we probably want to at least abstract that. Unless you want to spend that time doing the research for the uh, competition. I want to do 14 scenes, one for each day. <laughs> yeah, I'm down for it, but um, I, um, I would like to... Uh... I guess for my time, I would probably go back to Narwell, and I would probably be escorting um, my friend uh, Nilis from the City Watch and his wife there. Mm -hmm. As I said, I would. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, do. We actually have a place for them to live. Um, I mean, this castle hasn't started being built, but if you are willing to grant them a plot of land, I think they can start working on that. Well, do they want to be out there by themselves without the... Uh... I mean, who else is out there right now? Uh, there's a crew of dwarves that are stonecutters. And, um, uh, you know, they I'm... provide some of their own security, but not, you know... I mean, dwarves are always armed, so... You can always send Zigzag out there with... You know, we could do that. Also, at the same time, would um, the uh, paladin Miss Nibblehand be mm. heading out around that same time too um yeah and actually she will be probably going down once you really established down there right okay so you know um, that's uh that's an ongoing project you know the sister has promised you that she's gonna go down there but by what you saw and <laughs> in their manner things are a little more shaky than that um you don't know the specifics but they, they apparently don't get along as well as this. Well, I guess they get along as well as siblings do. You know, so. Not yet a nice nice out situation, but you don't know. Is Nilis going to go to the uh, the site of the building, or is Nilis going to stay in Narwhal? I think, well, it depends. Uh, what do you tell him to do? I mean, Well, I'm only, asking, I'm only asking uh, Robert, because Gar can offer the rooms that he's rented for months on end. <laughs> Um, I think, um, for the time being, they can stay in Narwell, um, until maybe more progress is made on, um, our keep or where the, uh, ruins are. Also, uh, Narwhal, Narwhal also has a priestess and she, the, the wife is pregnant, so. And I think that would also be appropriate as well. Right, so Gar can put him up in the, the rooms and then Zigzag can head on down to the, the site because Zigzag is a multi-capable artisan. Of many tasks, and has great reputation with the dwarves. So, yep. So he can both stay with them, and he can both work on the keep. Mm -hmm. I actually uh, go, uh, take Gar aside, and I um, just want to say I appreciate you um, kindly putting up the rooms for the time being. Well, it's better that they be used than not used. You uh, did? Uh, did you go down with? Uh... Sorry, not Robert. Uh, uh, Braith went down with them? I will go with them for the week. Just okay. To... Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's two weeks week down and two weeks up. So yeah, you have the four months. You will, you will have enough time to go down and come back up again. Whoever goes down, there's someone who you meet uh, who's sort of talking with the, the foreman. Let's see. Our, and it's someone you actually know. Uh, old Master Sadrian. So it's uh, not the old asshole, is it? Well, you think he's an asshole. He's just a mage, so... No. Yeah, that makes him an asshole. I actually uh, wanted to speak with him. Well, you can, make a, you can make a journey. Perfect. Because I was uh, already going with, but if we come across him, that's perfect. I mean, it's going to take a while for them. First, they're doing the land surveys, securing you know, securing the area to get the, the, uh, the rock you know, and the stone to cut. So it, that's going to take weeks, if not a couple of months, before they begin actual construction. Um, so they have to prepare the area. Uh, so Braith and and um, and you, you see Master, uh, Master Sadrian talking with the foreman, and they're having a, a lively discussion, right? Uh, not acrimonious, but rather, you know, rather loud and sort of exchanging ideas. It's like, 
what do you do? Real quick, just for clarification, this is in Narwhal? This is Narwhal, yeah. Okay. I mean, I have no business with them. I'm just here with uh, escorting. Um, you um, wants to go over. Please oh, yeah. Hugh's, a, Hugh's excited. Okay. Hugh's going to run over and just start poking, like, the side of the leg of Master Sadrian. <laughs> I will fall for it just in case. Uh, excuse, oh, oh, it's you, sir. Oh. It is. You actually used my name. Thank you. Okay, let's go with that, yes. Uh, um, I recently discovered there's something cool I can do. Yes. But you're good with magic, and I want to wear my armor while I do this cool thing. What exactly is this cool thing that you can do? Have you ever seen a panther before? I have. Okay, cool. I'm going to back up a little bit, and I'm going to turn into a panther. Oh, I see. Are you perhaps a uh, druid, sir? Uh, not. Hmm. Uh, interesting. So you are now using otherwise transmorphication magic. Transmutation. Transmutation. Yes. yes. Uh, magics. Um. Uh. Well. Um. What do you mean by wearing armor? And as far as I understand it, it's your everything gets. And he starts rambling on about, you know, you know, and then I turn back you know, you know, that, you know he's, he's like, what? So uh, that's the thing. I know that's how it normally works. Yes. Well, I want to be able to make it so it that doesn't happen, but it just shapes to form whatever I turn into. I'm, af I'm afraid I do not know the specifics more than able to identify what you're doing, but, uh, Perhaps you can get some animal barding? Yeah, but then I'd have to walk around wearing barding. I sort of like, I just, I'm sorry, I, I just don't know how to... No I worries. Mean, it's worth I, it. I, I thought it was worth a check. I suppose some kind of magical item could be crafted, but that would be expensive. Um, it may be beyond us right now, Master Hugh. What's expensive? Well, I have to do the research first. I might have to consult. Hmm. Oh, very interesting. Oh. And so, so he just sort of looks in the sky and it's like, and you hear uh, <coughs> from the dwarven woman, uh, sir. Oh, oh, of course. Yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, of course, this is why I was here. Um, and uh, Master Braith, Master Hugh, um, it, um, it, it's come to my attention that you are uh, in charge of this endeavor. Uh, is that true? You must be uh, clarify, please. What endeavor are you referring to? And he points at the surveying, and you know, they basically the dwarves have set up a small camp uh, for their for the workers, and they're setting up the site. They're basically, the, they're, they're measuring and 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 looking at the walls of the uh, fallen uh, keep. Like, well, the repair of this uh, keep they're in, right? Uh, um, we're, inv I'm, we're involved in it, yes. Um, it's truly uh, Kix uh, who is going to be the one that will be uh, making final decisions. Is there something that you need? Well, I have a suggestion. But if the person in charge is not here, then... Um, it's... Um, I guess I could send them a message, I suppose. We do like know. Me, would you wish me to relay it, Master Zadrian? Oh, well, of course. You see, uh, you, you, you remember my uh, experiment that I did in the, uh, my manor, correct? Well. Hmm. Do you? Were you there? Yeah. Uh, you're talking about the one where it's like multiple. Yeah. Distance. Yeah, I was there. Well, as I was describing it, um, and I will try to put it in lay layman's term, I was trying to attempt to create a, um, a, a an alchemical uh, planner web. The idea being that uh, there are multiple ways to do this, but I thought that this would be the best way to do it. It's to protect a dwelling or a home or an area 
from interplanar invasion or teleportation. But as explained, um, this must be, how can I say this, cooked in into the building as it is being put forth. Meaning that if you are in the mode of repairing or reusing this old uh, place, I could lend my expertise um, and inter integrate, uh, that's the word, yes, uh, integrate uh, my discoveries into the keep to protect it from planner invasion, teleportation, and other things, right? It would make it more stronger, uh, more difficult to assault, et cetera, et cetera. Just for clarification, you're saying you wish to integrate the, the weird planar defense <laughs> you had that we rescued you from into the keep because you think it'll work better by doing it from the ground up. No, no, no. See, it, it actually will work when doing it from the ground up. That, that, that was the problem. See, I tried to impose it on an existing structure. You have to understand that areas, buildings and such have, have their own spirit, if you will. It's uh, their own identity over time. The people there sort of make an impression. Uh, and he starts talking about um, a bunch of munch, about emotional... You know, uh, you know, integration into the stone and how memories become personalized and how our, you know, how personality becomes. It almost sort of sounds like in, 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 in something like from Evangelion or something. It's like, you know, you know, That's it, yeah, 80, 80, we 80 fields and you're like, what? You know, and after a while, he realized that you, realize that you have no idea what he's talking about. It's like, uh, suffice it to say that. The real problem, I redid all the calculations, was that if I be able to integrate it from the ground up, then it will become part of the, the, how can I say this, the soul of the place. And it will not interrupt its, its, its um, inherent ability and existence, Masters, as it were. Uh, uh, Masters Adrian, can I ask you to write this down, please? And I will pass it along to... Uh... Of Master course, Jay. of course. And he goes and there's he has like several bags and he has scrolls and stuff like that. It'll take me a while to sort of narrow it down for your friend. Of he was like, already yes. started walking away. Yeah. He was uh, going to the uh, basement to safely get the, the, the giant spiders out without having either side uh, lead, to, lead to murder. He will, he's going to um, inform people as he gets closer, but he's going to speak with them and be like, okay, guys, you got to go. We're fixing the place up. If you don't want to die, just come with me. I mean, oh, the the spiders. The spiders. He's going to let the uh, dwarves know, like, spiders are going to be coming through. I'm just getting them out to safety. It's fine. Uh, well, do an animal handling. It's going to be tough. Hell yeah. He does that, I just say to Zadrian. Just like yeah, the, the spiders are not going anywhere with you. They're not attacking you. But they're like, yeah, no, they're they're, they're they're staying in their corner, basically. All right. If you want to die to dwarves, because they're going to come down here and they're not, I won't be here to talk to you. <laughs> uh, no, Webford. <laughs> no, no, Webford is not that smart. But is he that charismatic? Yeah, still not that smart. Uh, and uh, and so, yeah, so he basically, it takes him a while, a couple of hours, really, to sort of get a multi-page thing that he can, because he's writing and, 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 you know, crossing things out and writing them again. And he asks for a clay table and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, you also see a delegation of kobolds come in. Is uh, the, uh, this the ones that I recognize? The two, the two scale scribe, yeah. Okay. Uh, led, led by, not by the chief, but by the scribe. Uh, the lead scribe, and they're they're marching. It's about five or six of them. You know, like, and, and the dwarves are there, but they kind of grab their picks and their and their tools, and they're like weary. And you see one of the dwarves, which is you know red beard. He's sort of you know the most of the dwarves are have like dark, dark brown to dark uh you know black iron kind of iron beard, and then the iron hard part of them, but the yeah. red bearded uh. Dwarf sort of pats one on the back and says, you know, don't worry about it. He talks to the to the kobolds, and the kobolds are like, you know, kind of you kind of see them kind of nod their heads and they start, they just spread and they start 
pulling at things and grabbing things and helping out. In fact, there were two dwarves going to pick up a package and then like three kobolds kind of descended on the on whatever it is that they were carrying. It's like, hey, let's go. <laughs> and they're like, dwarves are like. And they're basically being set to work. Yeah. And he and he uh, and the scribe moves looks toward your direction, and he moves forward and very you know with his clay title is like, Master Wraith. Yes. Uh, we have uh, learned uh, from our dwarven allies that the son of dragons is now the owner of this great place. Is this true? It is yes. Uh, who I, I'm assuming this is the the, the scribe. That's right. Yeah, he has the clay tablet on him, like, and then, like. I say, uh, yes, it is. Well, Master. wax tablet because clay not be able to actually. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, in that case, we the Iron Sooth Clan, or the uh, Sooth. It 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 loses something in translation. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, we as servants of the Son of the Dragon offer our services. Although we are still busy with the main contract with the with the fiery beard clan of dwarves, and we're doing well with them, you know, it's a few scuffles here and there, but it's, it's not that important. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> we would like to uh, help out here as best as possible. We know how to dig. We can carry stuff. It'll take a couple of us to actually carry something important, but still, we can do that. And here we are. I don't trust them, but just in case, insight real quick. Go ahead. I, I, I'm 24. I think I... Yeah, I mean, he seems very earnest. You know, well, he's tired to help. If I'm coming back up around this time, mm -hmm. do I know this individual personally? Yeah, well, you know him because he's like the second in command of, of the, the tribe, right? Uh, he's actually the brains behind the tribe, right? He's, uh, you know, he's the smartest usually like the chief gets a lot of orders but it's him yeah. who actually translated to everyone else right whatever gibberish the, the 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 chief thinks it's a good idea it's actually him who actually sort of makes it into a plan of action and right. he, he's never done anything to make him seem suspicious as far as i can tell i mean as far as being he's very much a kobold in this he's pretty servile to those who are above him and pretty authoritarian to those below him so okay. you know Pretty, pretty sad. Their lawful cobalt behavior, you know. So, okay. In that case, uh, I'll walk up, pat him on the back, be like, "Good to see you. Good to he see." He just runs like, Pat and starts rattling in 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 in, in dragons. Like, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm with them. Yeah. You will win. Oh yeah. Uh, Ma Master Hugh has. Um... They're in drag. They're, they're searching draconic because they're you know. If you don't know Draconic, you don't. We can't really follow the conversation. Oh, what yeah, are you doing? I, I I came across them when I was uh when I when I was leaving, and just been hanging out with them and helping them ever since. I was in mm -hmm. fact almost given this land, but we thought against it. You really ask them? I'm telling you, they almost did it. I, I, I not no. I will not insult the son of the dragon with such a base accusation. Okay, hold on one second. I'll show you. Uh, Braith. Master Hugh. At that party, you guys were almost crazy enough to, to, to vote me to be the Baron. At least in, as the group. It come up at one point, yes. You see his eyes, like, which are already kind of, you know, big, you know, being involved. You just go like this wise, like. Ah, oh, that's to be the most irresponsible thing I ever heard in my life. I agree. I didn't vote for myself. I thought they were nuts. I'm a kobold uh, riding a spider. I cannot believe that the Son of Dragon would actually allow such a thing. And the spider's got armor now. Is that, is that what? <laughs> behind, just coming up behind me, there's Webford with leather barding. And you see him retreating slowly. He's a, he wants to appear like he's being brave, like he's not afraid. He's like, uh, 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 and, uh, uh and he kind of hide, kind of tries to hide behind my brace. He's like, um, oh, that reminds you, me. You know that those things kill people, right? Yeah, most that's what most... He's fine. He's fine. That, that reminds me. You, if you're going to be digging, 
Um, I here is exactly where there's some spiders down there. I tried to get them to leave, but they did. They said no. They're like him, but not as cool. They actually eat people that are bad. He eats people that that deserve it. You let him put spiders in there? They were down there already. And he's talking to Brace on this. I'm like. The the spiders were already in the area there. We actually were trying to flush them out. You gotta be careful with this one. It's he's a he's 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 broken. He's that crazy. He's not a good cold. No, but he is a good person. Is that the same thing as cobalt? That depends on how you look at it. Metaphysics. That's what that is. Hey, it's like, was, even though he's supposed to be the smart of the cobalt, you can see the gears grinding. He's like, I'm, just, I'm, an, I'm looking at him. He's still a cobalt. And it's a metaphor. Um, oh, one of if those. If I may say so, uh, Master Hugh has done nothing but been quite helpful and energetic in ways that quite frankly pale to what I can even be. Is it unusual perhaps for how his nature is compared to the rest of your clan? Perhaps. Oh, but he allies himself with creatures that eat us. That also doesn't mean the creatures can't be tamed. Have you tried to tame them, good sir? That's beyond my skill, but apparently Master Hugh is able to do so. Perhaps mm. they hope that others can be tamed. Yeah, well, he didn't tell you what happened when he tried to tame the other spiders. Something about uh, eating people. I'm well aware of it already. Well, he failed. Whatever claims he has of taming are... I, I will not sully my lips with such crude language. Oh, oh. Uh, I'm going to go go hunt to get some stuff for everyone to eat real good tonight. But no, I learned my lesson. You got to get them from, from, from when they're born. Because if they grow wild, then they're wild already. If you get them from when they're born, you're good. I think. I'm going to go hunt now. He's not a very good thinker. Sometimes uh, wisdom comes in different ways, Master Cobbled. I, I never got your name, by the way. Oh, I'm just a scribe. I'm just a scribe. They call me Justinian. That's what the dwarves call me for some reason. Um, it seems very regal. I like it. It's a very dwarven name, actually. Mm -hmm. they, they got they got tired, I guess, of calling me the scribe, so they called me Justinian. At least you're not a pope. Anyway. What's a pope? I, that was out of character. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just want to see this kobold wear a really big hat now. <laughs> No, it's gonna be like lizard pope or something like that, like one of yeah. those things. Yeah. So anyway, eventually, yeah, he talks to you and he says yeah. that uh, the they're they're just a handful of kobolds, like four or five. Not, I mean, you said there were thirty or forty at least in the tribe, so they're just a handful of them. But they will help, and they kind of you observe them. They kind of do. I mean, they're not too dumb to get in the way of the dwarves, right? Uh, with the help of the uh, Firebeard uh, liaison, right? Uh, they they actually do some good work, but they're small and rather weak. So you know, there's only so much they can carry or 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 pull or whatever. But they're clever enough to find different ways to do things. Like you said, you see them working on pulleys and levers, and you know they they seem to be rather mechanically inclined. Uh, um, and find I clever think clever too, right? Yeah. Huh. I assume Zigzag is there now, too, right? Yeah, Zigzag is there. Well, if you're in... Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, I thought you were in Narwhal for some reason. Yeah, if you're no, on no. the site, then Zigzag would be on site. Because yeah. Yeah. we were at Narwhal, then we went to the um, the place. Now we're heading... We're, we're going to be heading back in a few... Yeah. Like a day, I assume. In fact, uh, you see Master Sadrian go and talk to uh, the Zigzag to compare notes and whatnot. I don't know how Zigzag would react to that, but... Uh, you know, uh, he didn't have the personal experience of him, you know, uh, being in the and the and the the web. So, um, well, the problem is being that also Zigzag is just coming into the operation, so he doesn't. You don't just take over from somebody else, and clearly they already got somebody in charge. So the operation would be find something that's not being done, start working on that. Yeah, I mean, they do need things like 
nails and and other you know basic materials and he is a good uh blacksmith so he can start providing that and you know built off from there it basic probably underneath his skill level certainly but well uh, yeah well, the thing is that he's great at a lot of things and also he brings his own tools all that yeah. kind of stuff so he's mm -hmm. ready to set up wherever yeah he basically uh, the entire blacksmithing up side of the operation just or naturally organizes it around him because he he's that good at doing it so it's like people are like yeah yeah he's he's he knows what he's doing let's, well yeah let's i mean that. if he's a masterful artisan but they've got him making the essential items that everybody else needs yeah he put himself in a central location like yeah here's your nails here's your uh sorry pulleys whatnot everything you need i'll just i can make small stuff faster than anybody else i will supply everybody mm -hmm. yeah we We've we've got those nails. When you hit them, they slightly screw in, so everything is really solid. Yeah, I'm slowly starting to figure out barreling. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I figure and, at uh, some point I can make some sort of hollow tube that'll use this technology. <laughs> I think I'll call it something else at that point. Maybe rifling. I don't know. I'm fiddling uh, with the idea. Uh. Anyway. Uh. Most of the iron that you're getting is from the mine. The uh, the fire beers have agreed to, in lieu of because they haven't paid you yet for your your part of the mine. It's like, well, we just can pay you with actual iron ore that you can use, right? You know, so it's uh, it's part of the. Uh, for example, the meta uh, it's ten thousand gold, but you already have a keep, so that cuts it in half, and the presence of the dwarves cut it half again. So you only need at least for the the central keep twenty five hundred gold. However, if you decide to go with the uh, alchemical web, that will actually double the cost back to 5000 And you have to decide early on, otherwise it won't work. You don't have to do it, but the, the, the advantage is that anybody who tries to sit without permission, without going to certain areas like teleport, dimension door, you know, summon creatures into protected areas. They can't do that because extra planner uh, activity is 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 blocked for the most part, unless it's a very powerful wizard or entity. Right? You but, vote yes that we do that because and, that's a big security. And that's that's basically what uh, he that's the offer that he's making. Right? Uh, he's there more for he wants to see it work. Right? He's more of a hey. So, well, not science, magic, you know. And so he wants to do that uh, more or less, right? He doesn't actually need the money. I mean, you can he know that he's well dressed. So he has a manor house. He is a minor noble, so he doesn't. You know, it's, it's more for the uh, for the discovery and the and the uh, and the experimentation than anything else. And he says so in the letter. So uh, yeah, you you're seeing it's gonna take a couple of weeks for them to just set up. Uh, they built a small. Uh, you know, area with tents, etc., and, and even put a palisade around it near the keep, but not at the keep. And they're doing the surveying work, and they're bringing the stones. So first, they have to do surveyor work and start the plans based on what you want to do, and get the materials and everybody in sight, and the food and stockpile and all that takes a couple of weeks, maybe a month or more. Then they got to find the place for the you know the quarry and start up the quarry. So yeah, that's why these tech stuff takes quite a bit of time. And of course, during the winter. They usually don't work because the you know the frost and ice and it tends to crack the stone. It's hard to work. So, but we'll deal with that when we do the time skip to the future. So, but just so you know, it's not going to be like, hey, keep us already done because you know we paid the money. It's not. It's not. You know, video game was like, hey, twenty five hundred. Keep. You know, nice, you know. but nope. Yeah. Um. All right. So I guess we got the information. Uh, I'm sure the cobbles will enjoy working here. Mm -hmm. Knock on. Um, and uh, I got the note from um, Zadrian to give back to uh, Kix. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm ready to head out, I guess, like the next day with you then. So, 100%. Um, that yeah, night, probably don't even that. need to roll for it. I would have hunted. Go, yeah, you're familiar, great, you're familiar great. with this area. So, you know, hunting is not really a problem. This is more plain. So, it's like deer and, and, uh, and other yeah. similar, uh, you know. If I probably That's exactly prob what I would have gone with gone with anyways. Probably at the at the end, you know, you get venison for everybody, and you know, doors uh, work hard. They they work hard and play harder, right? Because they also brought the mead and the ale. 
but <laughs> night parties, right? You know, it's like we work all day and we drink all night. We do it all over again the next day. These dwarves are not very dour. They are working, but they're not solo. Perfect. And then we will then we would head head back. And yeah. also on the way back, I pick up my helmet. Yeah, helmet, yeah. AKA cape. <laughs> yes, uh, they basically attach a cape to your uh to your helm. So now yep. you're sporting the oversized spear helm with the antlers and then a cape. What color is the cape? Uh it was made of fox pelts. Okay, so yellow brownish. Yeah. Yeah. Um I know in a lot of settings magical items sort of resize to fit, but I'm gonna Not say this. Not this one. No. I was I was I was going to hope that it didn't. It it fits you better because you have a snout. Perfect. So you know, if you were just like a gnome or a halfling, the 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 part the part on the front will just sort of droop over it, right? But since you have a snout, they would manage to get you know straps, chin straps, like two set of chin straps, one for your neck and one for your lower snout. So perfect. It's, yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm loving it. I'm riding back, looking like someone who should not be entering a city. Yeah. But the chinchas are loose enough that you can actually talk. There's no like, <laughs> you, know, yep. you don't have, yeah. So you go back, uh, take it everywhere. Uh, uh, Guard started doing his research, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, are you doing research by yourself or are you uh, uh, having someone else help you in that research? I think I'd have to do this private, like personally, rather. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Pando. Uh, sorry, no, uh, Barricat. Uh, you on the time that you're here, uh, have you uh, done anything to follow your leads on your former master? I mean, he you knew that he had visited the city recently, yeah. Um, so I was planning on uh, over this time to do some performances and then mm -hmm. use whatever influence I have to look into that and anyone who's involved with like the arena, you know, like pro there's probably people with reputations who go in every now and then, you know? Yeah. Uh, roll a performance for me. Okay. Performance. Is this the first time we've seen Barricat perform? No, I, he did it a few times before. Well, it would be yeah. for Gar, I guess. Well, I know I wouldn't be there. I just mean I can't remember but... you rolling performance before, so I was like... I have a few times. Even the worst performance he could give here is still like, leagues better it's than still the one like Kicks average. Game. Yeah. yeah, I mean, plus 10 is nothing to... Yeah. Uh, there's a big... Uh, there's a grand theater, there's a royal opera house, but you haven't reached those levels yet. Uh, but you find yourself, let's see where you find, because there's a lot of entertainment and places to be. Uh, you find yourself in the Green Dragon Inn. Uh, that is in the River Quarter. Uh, and you, the proprietor is one Rickard Damaris. Um, and he seems to be a font of information. Uh, you know, over the couple of days and weeks that you perform, you do perform very well. People like it. You tell him that you're in the sleeping giant and he says, you know, uh, say hi to the ogre, right? But he doesn't say it in a sort of you no know, joking, you know, friendly manner. And in fact, you actually mentioned Rickard to the ogre because everybody knows him as the ogre. He never knows his name. He probably has one, but no, everybody, and he doesn't seem to mind to be called the ogre, mostly because he's the only one around. So, you know, it's, not, it's going to confuse with anybody else. Uh, you know, and in fact, what if somebody asks, uh, like, uh, there was somebody who was like, uh, "Do you like to be called the ogre?" It's like, well, I'm an ogre, and he just laughed. You know, like, you know, he doesn't feel insulted by it. Although he does note, he's smart enough to know when people are trying to use it in, a, in an offensive way. Like the one guy he actually threw out the bar because, like, goddamn ogres, like, out you go, from one hand to him out of the out of the, out of the sleeping giant, and so. Yeah, people don't tend to mess with him too much on account that he's an ogre. Um, and uh, But here in the uh, in the Green Dragon Inn, you meet uh, Rickard Damaris. Uh, he seems to be an old adventurer. Uh, about uh, He appears to be about six, uh, 36 years old, uh, over six foot tall. 
And there's a and the one thing that you notice is over the bar, there's a gleaming uh it seems like almost brand new bastard sword that hangs over the, the bar. Um and and uh anytime he starts to make a, a story about his own adventures, he points to the sword. It's like, well, when I was with and almost treats it like a person, right? Like it's some kind of personality in itself. Uh, but he also has different names for it at different times, which is kind of weird. But you know, maybe there's Rickard is there's not all Rickard is maybe not all there. Maybe uh, he's a bit young to have retired. But yeah. Um, and eventually, you get to the point where you talk about your old master. It's like, oh well, yeah, uh, I saw him in the opera house. Lovely performance. But he was asking around for something. Um, uh, you can make a charisma. Uh, yeah, make a persuasion check. Because he feels that he seems a bit uh, nervous about this. Uh, persuasion, he says? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, uh... For people who don't know where the uh, the river quarter is, let's move in the map up here. It's the R right here, but uh, the 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 uh, the inn is actually uh, outside of the walls itself in this area. Also, this area has a lot of Rene. The Rene are um, this world's equivalent to um, the Romani. In fact, uh, you know this for a fact because you know you're in lore and stuff like that, and you heard in, in the street that the Rene actually are not from this world. They appeared about two hundred years ago from a place called Rope, and they've been here ever since. And sadly, they have this similar reputation to the Romani, right? Um, uh, as you know, thieves and uh, you know, uh, untrustworthy people, etc. But uh, they seem to have been, uh, you know, sort of taken over the river quarter more or less. Uh, it seems to be their domain. They haven't caused you any problems that you know of, but you know, 